Returning to Lindley's station here, on the Lindley's Garden Railway, right at the back of the garden, we take a look at an example of a block section, ready to make up the wiring loom and connections for one of the block sections in the area. Lindley's Garden Railway is operated through track controlled block sections. In a previous video, I've explained a little about how these block sections operate, but in this video, I'll share a helicopter view of one of the complete block sections through Lindley Station. The section to concentrate on this time begins around the back of the studio building, along to where there will be a crossover junction, through the platforms and then on around, over the tunnel and beyond around the back of the shed. Hi, I'm Warren Brandon, welcome to another Linley's Garden Railway video. I have created a simple photographic plan of the block section of track and the black line represents the alignment of the track through the platforms and around the curves. The track forms the up local through the inner lines of the station and is designated block L08. In an earlier video, I described the overall track and block arrangements through Lindley Station, but I've since changed the labelling a little. The trains will always run in this direction, along the block to the station here. On the departure end of the platform, there will be a signal, and the control of this block will include the control of the signal. This will be signal L08 to be the same as the block coding. Numbering everything like this helps to keep cables and connections all organised, much easier for the installation process and maintenance later on. Just here, there'll be a set of crossover junctions so the traffic can come up either the up main or the up local and then switch over to the other line if required. I won't be constructing the junction this winter, that's a whole load more work, but I must ensure that the control systems included at this stage will be suitable for when the junction does go in. In advance of the junction, there will be a signal, number L04. In simple terms then, the theoretical control block is then formed here between the two signals of L04 and L08. You may wonder where signals L05 and L06 are etc, but they are elsewhere in the station. However, it's not quite as simple as it may seem and the full block control is not exactly signal to signal. In fact, the way I've designed the block section control system, the track blocks extend 2 metres beyond each signal. With this, any one block will hand over a train to the next block at either normal running speed if the pass signal was clear, or a slightly reduced speed if the pass signal was at caution. This handover length has to be at least 2 metres as I've designed the track layout and control system to cater for trains of up to 2 metres in length. Track power isolators are placed here to divide the track into track block sections. This will become more clear in a few minutes. Bear with me. Right, the next thing to look at is the train position sensors. These detect the position of the front of a train as it travels along the track. The control system responds to these detections at each point and makes changes as necessary. Maybe the train is decelerated or stopped right in front of a signal. Or maybe the detection clears the block section behind it. Or with a train entering a block section, the signal which has just been passed is then turned to danger. 
There are five positions in any one block section where the train is detected. The first detector is the train in section and this is placed right after a signal. The second detector is about halfway into the block length and is called train approaching. The third is a short distance back from a signal, which I call train final approach. The fourth is train at signal. The concluding one of the five is just over two metres beyond the track power break point for a blocked section and is called train out of section. This location is actually beyond the block section and a train detection here confirms that the train has passed clear of the block section. Let's go back to the beginning of the station area and follow a train as it progresses through the block and see what happens along the way. The train at this point is under the management of the block section controller L04 which knows the section ahead L08 is clear to enter but not beyond that. L04 signal is therefore at caution. The blue train is approaching signal L04 at caution and the speed of the train is managed at a reduced speed as it passes the signal at caution. As the lovely blue train passes signal L04, it goes over the train detector, train in section, of L08. This is responded to by the controller and sends a logic control instruction back to L04 to reference this. Controller L04 responds by putting the signal to danger. That would mimic the real-life action of a signalman placing the signal to danger to protect the train just past. Then next, the pretty blue train continues and is detected around halfway along the theoretical block length by the detector train approaching. As the signal ahead is held at danger, the train will be decelerated slightly by the block section controller. Slower now, the beautiful train moves forward towards the stop signal and is monitored by the train final approach detector. The controller decelerates the train further in preparation for the final stop at the next detector just before the signal. Thank you for sticking with this video so far. If you'd like to know more about the way trains are detected, please look at the video about that in the playlist about the DLC or Decentralized Logic Control System that I've devised. As the train triggers the train at signal detector, the control system stops the train at that spot just before the signal. The delightfully blue train will then stand here all the time the signal is kept at danger. The signal to the rear will also be kept at danger as the controller L08 will inform controller L04 that the section L08 is occupied. But the bubbly blue train doesn't have to stay here forever and when the signal is cleared, things begin to happen. How exciting! Apparently all by itself, but actually under the control of controller L08, the happy blue train is started, accelerated past the signal and on towards the end of the track block section. As it goes forward, the train triggers the train in section detector of the block section ahead, not shown in this diagram. And in turn, this sends the instruction back to L08 to turn the signal just past to danger. 
As the glorious blue train continues, it is accelerated further and is set to achieve normal line speed by the time it reaches the track section isolating power gaps. The track section ahead is ready to receive the train and so it continues on powered by that track section ahead. As the very jubilant blue train clears the track section of LO8 completely, it triggers the train out of section detection, thus informing the controller that it is out of the section. The block section ahead of LO8 signal is now occupied and so the signal remains at danger, thus protecting the train ahead. However, as the block LO8 is now unoccupied, Controller LO8 also sends a logic instruction back to LO4 to the rear to say that section LO8 is now unoccupied, but its signal is still at danger. LO4 controller responds accordingly by setting its signal to caution. All blocks are designed to operate in more or less the same way, but the inclusion of junctions and other operating requirements does affect how some of the system elements work. Each block section then needs to be designed individually. Next time I'll focus on the cable bundle design for the LO8 block and explain how the detector cables, the signal cables, the track power feed cables are all bundled together to form a bespoke wiring loom ready for installation in the railway. The end screen here gives you links to the next suggested video in the series and a playlist which you may find interesting. Please do take a look if you have the time. Thanks for watching and bye for now.